The Jeep Renegade isn't just a new vehicle. It's a whole new philosophy. You've got to realize that Jeep, more than any other brand, has wrapped itself up in the American flag. It helped the Allies win World War II. It was popular with the GIs after the war, and it's been proudly built in America ever since. That is until this car, the Renegade, came along this year. It's built in Italy, which my grandmother would have certainly reminded us is the birthplace of Mussolini. She wouldn't have driven it if she were still with us, just like she wouldn't have driven a Mitsubishi because they made the Japanese Zeros back in World War II. But does that kind of thing still matter today? I'm not so sure, because today's buyers know the car industry has been globalized more than ever before. The owners might be in one country, the assembly happens in a different country, and parts come from lots of different countries. In fact, I'd say today's buyers are much, much more concerned with whether a car is good or not, as opposed to where it's built. And based on a few hours driving the new Renegade both on and off-road, I'd say Jeep has got a fantastic new vehicle on their hands. On the road, it feels quiet and composed, just like a good, small crossover should. You can get it with a 2.4-liter engine and 9-speed automatic transmission, or you can get it with a smaller 1.4-liter engine with a 6-speed manual. I thought the manual transmission was an awful lot of fun. And off-road, I took the Trailhawk version up a steep, rocky incline that really pushed it to the limit. The same course that Jeep used to introduce the much bigger Grand Cherokee a few years ago, and it definitely had the kind of off-road chops that Jeep buyers want. Again, that's using the beefed-up Trailhawk version as opposed to the other, softer flavors of the Renegade that are clearly more designed for the street. My favorite feature on it is a roof that can both slide electronically and be removed like those T-tops back in the 80s. When you take the roof off, it really gives you that open-air feeling that's so fun in these Jeeps, almost like a convertible. Personally, I like the way it looks, both inside and out. Jeep's designers had an awful lot of fun with this car, and I love the playful little touches that the interior designers added throughout the cabin. My only complaint is that the knobs and switches didn't feel as nice and solid as some of Chrysler's better products. It seemed a bit flimsy in places, but Chrysler's reps assured me that's only because I was driving a pre-production car, and that should be fixed on the cars at the dealer. So we'll see. Pricing starts at $17,995 for the Sport model, but that doesn't even include some basic features like air conditioning. Most people will be interested in buying the Latitude for $21,295 or the Limited for $24,795. Both those are available with four-wheel drive for an additional $2,000. And finally, if you want the Trailhawk version to do some serious off-roading, it'll cost you $25,995, which includes the four-wheel drive and Jeep's select terrain system with a rock-crawling mode. <laughs>